Welcome back to the Now What series where you are discovering how to live a victorious life in Jesus Christ. Today is episode four, the Bible. Where do I start? You know, the word of God is not just a history book. No, 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 no. A lot of people think that the Bible, all the things in it, the stories, you know, it's just good knowledge or it's history. Listen, this Bible right here is the power of God unto salvation. Romans 1.16 says, I am not ashamed of this gospel. This is good news. This is the life that you need in your life to make your life victorious, uh, that you're a more than conqueror, that you're flourishing, that you're bearing fruit. The word of God is everything. You know, in this word, even God says that this was inspired by him. God breathed. That means every word in here was God breathed for you and for me to live a life victorious in him, to know who we are, to know what we possess. It's so important, you know, and you can be lost, honestly, if you just open your Bible and flip through and pick up scripture or maybe start in Genesis. Listen, this is this is why you're watching these videos. So you can know what to do. We want to help you. So I want you, first of all, to understand the power behind this word. Before you even start reading, let me tell you why you need to read your Bible every single day. First of all, in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, I'm going to read you a scripture. It says, the word of God is living and active. That means it's it's living. It's living bread. It's life to your very body right now. It's living and active. This is, this is the word that we're talking about. That's why you don't need to look at this as just something that I should do and, you know, I'll get around to it or uh, I don't know if I understand everything. Nope. You need to realize that this is your lifeline, the word of God. It's your bread. It's your seed. And when you sow this in your heart, you're going to produce what this word says you're going to produce. Think of it that way. Mark 4, 14 says the sower sows the word. You need this word in your heart so that you will produce the fruit in your life that Jesus intended. So this word, Hebrews 4, 12, let me get through the scripture. I can preach on this all day. Hebrews 4, 12 says, this word of God is living and active and sharper than any two edged sword piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit of both joints and marrow and able to judge the thoughts and the intentions of your heart. Listen, the word of God is powerful. It's seed. It will produce exactly what it is sown. So it's important that you make provision for you to succeed in your reading of this. Don't think that it's something that if you get around to it, you know, now that you're a new person in Christ, you need to know, what do I do? What, what am I supposed to do? You know, it, it, it's, you're in the new kingdom. You're like, if you were to go to a new country and have to learn a new language, a new way of life, a new culture, how to do things, where to work, where to listen, you are in a new kingdom and we're helping you discover what this kingdom is like, how we talk, what we do, what's important to us. What is necessary for, for a successful life, for a life that is pleasing to God? It's this word. It's powerful. It's living. It's active. It's the gospel. It is what will save your soul, your mind, your will, and emotions. In Romans, Paul tells us in chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, that we are transformed by this. And he encourages us. This is something we must do. He says, no longer conform to the pattern of the world. What does that mean? That means you can no longer just live normally like you normally do with your normal patterns and live life, go to work, go to school, um, you know, check the box of religion. No, 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 no. This thing is meant to transform you. You know that new life we talked about, that new life that you become a new person in Christ? This word will help your mind be renewed. It will help your desires change. It's not just about thinking. It's not your brain. 
Your soul is made up, your mind, will, and emotions. That means every part of you, who you are, this word will transform you. The Bible says, don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is how you please God. This is how you know that you're accepted, that you have a purpose, that you have a plan. It's through your word, through this Bible right here. So this has got to become important every single day. Every single day, you've got to make time to read the word. It's vital for you. So I wanted to read that for you because it's important. It's important for you to realize if Jesus ate this word, we need to eat this word. You know, many times you'll see in parables from Matthew to all the gospels, Jesus quoting the word, Jesus quoting the prophets of old, Jesus quoting Isaiah. Why? Because the word is what helped him live a victorious life. If you think about when, uh, in Luke chapter four, when Satan came to tempt Jesus, he tempted him when he was hungry, when he was at his hungriest moment, he tempted him with, with stones, you know, make them bread. The Bible says this, the enemy even quoted the word, but you know what Jesus did? He quoted the word back to him. And he says, "Uh uh-uh, man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Jesus knew his word. He knew how to answer temptation, how to answer evil, how to answer anything that came up, any opposition. He knew how to answer with the word of God. And that is why it's important for you to sow the word of God in your heart today. So where do you start? Great question. You can start in the book of John. John is a great place to start. You can set um, a reading schedule. You know, whether it's a chapter a day, whether it's half a chapter a day, the vital thing is to sow the word of God in your heart. Some things you may not understand right away, but guess what? You're sowing those seeds. You're sowing the word of God in your heart. But that's why it's important to go to church to hear the word of God. You know, not only do we read, but the Bible says faith comes by hearing. How do we hear? Unless there's a preacher, right? So we have to put ourselves in a position to read the word of God, to eat the word of God, to talk the word of God, to hear the word of God. This is your life's manual. This is your instruction. This is um, your book of, of, of where you get your design, your purpose, what to do. It's all right here. So it's important that you make time to read. So don't just depend on church hearing the word, but also take time to read the word. Read it out loud. Read it from your phone read it from, from a Bible, whatever is good for you, you know, read the word. So start in John. Uh, why? Because it's an overview. It's an overview of the life, the death, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who he was, what he's done, what he's left you telling you it's a powerful book. You can move to the book of James. Why? It's wisdom. It's, it's keys that you can know how to live a practical Christian life. What, what you need to do. Um, you know, people in your church, you know, can help you from that point. You can subscribe to the channel here, start looking at the series, start hearing the series, start reading those. We have tools and resources for you to understand what this word of God is for your life. It is the most powerful weapon that you have. Why? Because the Bible says the word of God will never fade away. Grass may wither, flowers will fade, but this word of God, it's going to stand forever. It was and is and always will be the life of Jesus Christ. So get the word inside of you. Make it a priority. If you need help, ask for help. We have resources for you to grow in this word, to be victorious. Why? Because that is the life Jesus Christ paid the price for you to have. Don't struggle. Don't live in sin. Don't feel like you're all alone. This word will give you the power that you need to live a victorious life in Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me pray for you today. Father, in Jesus name, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you gave us your word, your life. It's, it's like the tree of life in form, Father, in, in natural form that we can read, we can partake, we can live victorious because of your word. We thank you, God, for giving us this word as our substance, as a daily portion of what we need to live successful, to be who you've called us to be. We thank you for your word. We're going to make a plan. We're going to be intentional on reading it, 
on, on sowing it in our heart and watching the increase of our lives. So we thank you for it. We dedicate this time to you. And Father, we thank you. You're going to help us by your spirit know what to read, when to read, how much to read. We thank you, God. We're going to be a product of what this word sown in our heart becomes. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. We call you blessed.